We've been dealing a lot lately with the topics of feminism and anti-feminism, sexual health, pornography, the anti-porn public crisis designation that Utah has assigned to pornography. So for today's classic interview, I want to go back to March of 2013 when I interviewed Nika Noel, who is a uh, self-described feminist porn director and we talk to her about what that means what feminist pornography is and her thoughts on a lot of related issues so let's not delay any longer my interview from a little over three years ago with Nika Noel joining me is Nika Noel she writes and directs straight gay lesbian and transgender themed erotic films and she has been nominated for several awards at the good for her Feminist Porn Awards in Toronto on April 5th. She will also be publishing on Huffington Post. So, Nika, it's great to talk to you. Question one, which I think is the kind of obvious question is, one of the primary criticisms of American pornography is it objectifies women. It's produced mostly by men, for men. How do you take that and reconcile it with being in any way feminist? Um, well, that's a very good question. Um, first of all, I, I've never really called myself a feminist, and that's not to say that I'm I'm not pro women. Um, but it, the term is um, the term is kind of funny to me. I, I don't call the the movies that I make feminist porn. I know that that other people do, and I know that there are a couple different definitions for it. But um, but it's not the way that I uh, characterize my movies. Um, that said. Uh, I, I think that for a long time, um, yeah, women didn't want much to do with, with porn. And um, also I think the people that were uh, involved with porn, um, the men that were involved with porn, maybe they, uh, maybe they weren't thinking along the lines of, of doing something artistic or doing something that would represent real feelings or, uh, or storylines. And it's not that men out there didn't want to see that. Um, Actually, there are a lot of mysteries to me as to why the adult industry was so limited for so long. But I think uh, now that more people are talking about porn and um, couples are talking about it and enjoying it together and women are getting more interested in it, uh, we've seen changes in the industry and I'm part of that change. So when you when you say that there's kind of a diff you're kind of alluding to this idea of shooting porn from one or another perspective, if, if you are producing a movie, for example, how is the movie qualitatively different if you're taking into consideration, I don't, maybe feminist is not the right term, but a feminist perspective, a female perspective, than what is kind of the male dominated, male produced for male audience movies? I think the biggest misconception is that there's a, a male perspective and there's a female perspective. There are different sensibilities. There are different fantasies. Um, you know, it was interesting to me that I found, because I had always enjoyed lesbian porn, and that was uh, the first type of porn that I uh, started making when I got into the industry was just uh, all women. And um, I have always thought that my fantasies and what I liked seeing and what I didn't like seeing in my lesbian porn was kind of specific to me and that it was my own unique psychology and, uh, and fantasy life. And then as I got onto the, the fan forums, I discovered that, um, that I had pretty classic lesbian porn tastes and that they were, um, they were similar to uh, a great deal of the men that enjoyed lesbian porn. And I started to see that this wasn't really a gender thing. This had to do with what type of fantasy you enjoy. And some people, men and women, enjoy something where there's, there's more feelings involved or it looks like the couple is more um, emotionally invested in each other or, or psychologically um, interested in each other. Other people, men and women, don't want to see that. They want to see something that looks more extreme and more um, impersonal. And um, Well, to talk about that, I mean, if we think of it as kind of supply and demand, the majority, I think you would agree, of, of uh, uh, erotic cinema or pornography, as, as it may be called, um, does seem to, to conform kind of to the latter stereotype that you mentioned, not the first one. So 
why would it be wrong to assume that that's what's preferred? In other words, if it was the former, which is really preferred, wouldn't it just be more profitable for most porn not to be degrading to women? Right. It, it seems like common sense, right? But the, the problem was that there had been no market research before the Internet for porn. None. So um, basically what you had was, uh, was customers and fans that had very little recourse. They certainly had no way to voice their opinions about a movie or their feelings about porn anonymously. Um, the Internet allowed them to do that. So as the Internet took hold and more people got comfortable with it and started viewing porn on the Internet and then finding communities of people that like the same type of porn that they liked, what you saw are the fan voices emerging and starting to talk about what they did want to see. And the industry is changing as a result of that. So this, this to me is really like the era of the fan because now we do have market research um, with VOD, video on demand. Uh, um, we're able to, to track and see uh, what people are watching for how long, um, what they fast forward through, those kinds of things. So now we have some information, and the information is a little bit startling, and it's making people think that, well, what's the big change? Well, I, I don't think that there's a big change. I think that before, people just had to take whatever they were given, and mm. they, they couldn't really complain about their porn. <laughs> what were they going to say? Who were they going to say it to? And there was such a big stigma with even admitting that you enjoyed porn or that you you wanted to see a specific thing in your porn. So I think people were, were pretty much stuck before with whatever was dished out to them. You talked about, um, uh, about lesbian porn, and I mentioned you've directed straight gay, lesbian, and transgender-themed movies. Is it important yes. to have actors, for example, if it's, if it's a gay porn movie, actors that are actually gay? I mean, it's widely known that there is sort of this gay-for-pay a uh, uh, scenario where some some straight men will, because it's what's available work wise, will perform in gay gay porn movies. How important is that to you? And then how does that compare to more broadly the industry? Um, well, I think that uh, sexuality is a little more complicated than uh, than a lot of people um, give it credit for. Well, I credit. understand that, but I, I'm a, let's I assume that those are self-described, you know, however I, someone identifies. I do understand what you're saying, and I'm trying to, to just sort of um, get you to the answer, which yeah. is that, that there, are, there are the people that are not attracted to their own sex at all. They are faking it all the way through. Um, they don't want to tongue kiss. They don't want to uh, be intimate. They just want to do very mechanical positions and essentially get it over with as quickly as possible and collect their paycheck. That's my definition for gay, of gay for pay. Somebody who just has absolutely no interest in the sex that they're having is, um, is incapable of being attracted to uh, the other person because of their gender and they're just doing it for the money. No, I will not hire those people. Um, those people will ruin my movie and nobody wants to feel that they're having sex with somebody that uh, just simply doesn't want to be with them on any level. Um, it's, it's a degrading experience on, on both ends of that equation. So we do avoid that. However, there, there are other, what I was trying to get to before is that there are, there are men and there are also women in, in lesbian porn that they enjoy the experience of being with their own sex. They, they feel attracted, they feel lust, they, they can feel that passion, but they don't identify as gay in terms of what, what they're looking for in their personal life in a relationship partner. Um, they're not comfortable uh, in a gay relationship for whatever reason. They like to be with the opposite sex when it comes to relationships. But when it comes to um, performing, they enjoy it. They, um, there's a level that they can really engage on. And, uh, and so I think a lot of those performers are, are legitimate and they get a bad rap for, you know, maybe, oh, he dates women in real life or she dates men in real life. Well, that doesn't mean that they're not enjoying what they do.
Nika, a lot more questions to ask you. One thing I want to ask about is you said you don't necessarily consider yourself uh, um, uh, in feminist porn per se, but for people who do consider that uh, a genre, is feminist porn different than porn oriented for women? Are those two separate things? Um, your guess is as good as mine. I, I've been, you know, it's funny because I was just writing about this um, for, the, for my Huffington Post blog. Uh, the fact that I was never completely sure what feminist porn was alluding to. Was it that, um, you know, women are making it with other women in mind? Um, you know, is it that everybody's treated a certain way on set and during the, the actual performance that there's a certain standard of how people are treated and how the sex is, is shot, the philosophy? Um, it may be all of those things. But I think it's it's kind of a mistake and it's, it's limiting to, um, to attach sort of gender politics to, um, to what's really like, like I said, in my opinion, just, just a way of approaching sex and a philosophy and, a and, um, they're, they're human values. I mean, they're, it's not anything that's specific to feminism or women. I, I really don't believe that. And, and, um, and also, um, you know, I do feel that men get a very bad rap, um, male fans, male porn fans, and that a lot of people think that they're just, they just want to see something sleazy or they just, you know, they're, they're not interested in, in seeing anything um, emotional or seeing real women. They want to see these sex bots and not true. I mean, men, uh, men were my earliest fans. I mean, my fan base is primarily men. So, um, if you do win at the good for her feminist porn awards, will you give them a similar line there? Will you say, listen, I love the fact that I've won, but these, this is the problem with your entire award ceremony. Or will no. you kind of just, you'll take it easy there, right? <laughs> I've been to the feminist awards before and I, I love the people. Um, <laughs> I think it's more as the, as the queer awards, actually, I, I, I was just speaking to a, a performer, a trans performer last night on the phone and, I remember thinking, like, I wonder why they call it the feminist porn awards and not just the queer porn awards, because it's, it seems to me more of, um, you know, the, the queer sensibility, which is, um, which is essentially where I'm coming from. Um, I'm more comfortable with that term, I think, than with feminism. Hmm. And, uh, and that's, that's what that community seems to be to me. Feminist porn, I think, is, is something that has kind of caught on as a as a buzzword as something that piques people's interest when they see it in a headline because it's a misnomer, you know. Well, it also just, I think that maybe it's a code word that makes it um, feel more acceptable to women who might otherwise be uncomfortable. Don't you think? Isn't couldn't it maybe be just a way to frame something so women say, "Hey, it's okay that I'm into this." It could be. Um, I'm finding these days that women are, are extremely comfortable. Um, the women, well, I mean, I, I guess it's it's really the women that are coming to me and talking to me that seem comfortable. So there may be a whole yeah, bunch of yeah. There may be some self selection bias there. <laughs> <laughs> but the ones who are are extremely comfortable. I mean, they are. This is a big part of their life, and they like talking about it. They're into the the performers, and they follow them on Twitter and they know everything about them and they, um, you know, they're fanboys and fangirls and this is a big part of their identity. Right. So, so yeah, I, I am definitely seeing, a, you know, a reduction in the, the level of shame or the having to explain your interest in porn or, but I only watch feminist porn. I, <laughs> I, I don't really see uh, too much of that going on. I think in general with them, um, you know, certainly with cable and with HBO and the, the you know, Sex in the City and, and the shows that were essentially showing softcore sex scenes, um, from what I was able to gather, I would, I would see, a, you know, basically what looked like um, softcore sex happening on these cable shows. And, and it's, it's gotten people more comfortable, I think, with the idea of, um, of nudity and sex and um, with not assuming that something absolutely terrible is going on and that everybody is on drugs and that it's sure. all very awful. You know? Hey, last thing, and a couple of people sent in this question. Is it possible as, a, as someone who, who appears in porn films to have what, some, what people would kind of consider a, a traditional love, marriage type monogamous relationship while someone is an active performer? Is that possible? And then also, what about just afterwards? In other words, what's the effect of having performed in these movies? Um, well, again, I don't think you can say it's the same for everyone. 
Sure. Um, you know, people are all very different, and they have uh, they have different um, kinks, I guess you'd call it. There are a lot of men who are married to uh, adult female adult performers who actually, and they're not in the industry, the men, they're civilians, as we call them, and they actually like are Like my excited. producer, Lewis, yeah. <laughs> they're excited by and turned on by the idea that all these men want their wives or girlfriends and that, um, you know, their, their girlfriend or wife is coming home to them um, after having sex with some hot guy. This is part of their fantasy. They like Yeah, actually, that wouldn't appeal to Lewis. I take that back. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are the, um, then there are the, the, I guess you'd call swinger couples where, right. um, where both, uh, people involved, whether they're both in the industry or only one person is in the industry, they're very comfortable and open with, um, having multiple partners and they do it in their personal life and, and working in porn is, is more or less an extension of a philosophy and, a, and an agreement that they've, they already are comfortable with. Um, you know, I, I think that the uh, certainly the problem um, for for me has been uh, just that people in porn talk about porn all the time, and sometimes I, you know, it's sort of um it it really starts to consume you because I, I think with any oppressed group or, or sort of subculture or stigmatized group, you start to really over identify with whatever your stigma is or whatever mm. your subculture is. And uh, that's just my personal observation. May not be true, but but sure. that's um, that's what I've found to be true. And um, and sometimes you know you just want to get away from talking about it all the time. And and um, yeah, maybe you just want to talk about English league soccer one afternoon, and uh, that's that's that. You don't want to get into the minutia of the day's work, right? Right, and <laughs> and it, you end up talking about it because it's the thing that. Um, is on everybody's mind, I guess, that this, you know, civilians want to hear about it and they want to know what's going on or they're very curious about it. Um, it's definitely something that I, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to go out on a date with somebody who's not in porn, I have to give it a little bit of thought. How much do I want to talk about? Do I really want to spend the whole evening talking about porn? You know, those kinds of things are more the things that I find myself concerned about. Um, very as far, Yeah, as far as the other stuff about, you know, jealousy or it, it just varies from couple to couple. I mean, there, there are a lot of ways to live. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to have relationships these days. And so I think some of these um, concerns or preconceptions are, are starting to be a little bit outdated. All right. We've been speaking with Nika Noel. She writes and directs straight, gay, lesbian, and transgender-themed erotic films. She is nominated for several awards at the Good For Her Feminist Porn Awards in Toronto, April 5th. I understand tickets are still available if you will be in Toronto on April 5th. Nika, really great to talk to you, and we'd love to have you back in the future. I'd love to. Thank you so much.